It helps to create employment, generate revenue, and reduce prices, among other benefits. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, it is trade. In this program, we'll take a look at the Economic Partnership Agreement, examine its benefits, and see how best companies can penetrate the extra-regional markets. And we'll also take a look at two companies involved in trade, one of them long established and the other a new entity. In 2008, Barbados and other CARICOM nations signed the Economic Partnership Agreement. It's a trade agreement which is designed to facilitate better access for our products and services to markets in Europe. The EPA is a trade and development agreement between the EU, the European Union, and CARIFORUM. CARIFORUM being the uh, CARICOM states plus the Dominican Republic. And it's a very broad agreement. I, I said it covers trade and development, so it has trade in goods, trade in services, it has provisions to do with competition policy, um, investment, and of course it has a development component as well where as part of the overall agreement, since it's a trade and development agreement, there are provisions for EU assistance to assist with the competitiveness and export uh, capability development and carry forum states. And that's very important for us because one of the challenges that we face is that carry forum um, uh, companies, by and large, are not really that internationally competitive. And so one of our objectives in this agreement is to try to upgrade those carry forum com companies so that as many of them as possible actually are export oriented and it, we call it export ready is the jargon now. It is not level. Um, what, what we seek to do with the provisions in the agreement is to balance it somewhat. And I say it's not level because clearly if you're operating in a market with 500 million people, as opposed to one with 290,000. I mean, there's no comparison with what you can do with economies of scale, the kind of things that you can, 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 can uh, produce in the you know, millions in Europe. Uh, you can't produce in Barbados at all. So, and also, because of, of the level of industrialization in those, con con in those countries, they have market access requirements, and uh, you would have heard about the sanitary and phytosanitary issues a lot. Um, we are now struggling to put in place a proper sanitary and phytosanitary regime. So, uh, you know, the, the, some of the chicken producers, chick punk and others complain every time I see them that they are ready, but they're, they're, um, they're ready, but they can't um, get into the market because we don't have a proper SPS regime. So that kind of challenge. But we are working on that. I know that Ministry of Agriculture have a program, and AICA is also assisting the region. So how we're trying to rebalance is that we're using EU development support to help us to improve on those things where we need help. One of the things that we realized as we were thinking about negotiations, even before we got into them, was that one of the problems that uh, Barbadian and other carrier forum companies faced over the years was that they had access to the EU market, but they were not capable of taking advantage of this access. And, uh, in other words, the market access was there nominally in theory, but in practice it was difficult because you have to have products that can compete in the marketplace in terms of quality, price, the ability to deliver them on time and so on. If you don't have that, having access to the market is, is of no value. And so we thought that where we needed to go was to really seek to improve the Barbadian and other California companies so that they become more competitive, so you improve their processes, and also that they become more export-oriented and also more capable of competing in export markets. So that is part of the, the whole process. We have a significant program to try to do that. The European market is vast and highly competitive. If access is to be achieved, then research is essential, along with identifying the right products at the right prices. The way we look at that is that 
you being the, the particular manufacturer or service provider, you need to, to go into the marketplace and look at the marketplace and, and make an assessment and a determination yourself. Which is why part of the, the program which is administered by Caribbean Export involves taking people to the marketplace so they can see for themselves what the product products are like in the market, what kind of products they are and how the products are traded. So that rather than than my saying you know you should go and, and, and sell bottles or something. You go in the marketplace if you're a manufacturer, you look at them and say, oh, maybe I don't want to sell bottles, but I can sell bottle caps or whatever. But the thing is that the products, I would say, have to be products that either have some unique characteristic about them, and you know, the, the beer and the rum to a large extent satisfy that, or they, 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 they design in some way, in other words, something that sets them apart. Because the reality is that if you are uh, producing, I don't know, something that is very standardized and can be produced uh, mechanically very easily, obviously the economies of scale is going to play a big part. In a small country like Barbados, you really can't do a great deal there. So that's why it's to use to people, if you find something that is different, that not everybody can do or everybody is doing, then you have a greater chance of succeeding with that because the competition is, is, is not is intense. And I think that's one reason why the beverage people are doing well because rum might not be rum, but Barbina rum has a particular aura to it. Uh, and uh, the banks obviously have established a very special kind of uh, niche for itself. One company that has long perfected its product offerings with mass market appeal is Banks Holdings Limited. Well, if we start from when the original brewery was built in 1961 and coming all the way through, the first uh, persons behind the brewery would say it was a fair challenge. Remembering that the country was a spirit-based country, producing the first brewery ever in Barbados, bringing a brand, brand new called Banks Beer. Um, it would have been a challenge in those days. But again, the vision of the team and the dedication of the sales team, they worked tirelessly to ensure that Banks, the brand, the beer of Barbados, was available island-wide. It was sampled, it was tested, and it was tasted. And guess what? Because of the quality that it produced, a gold award-winning beer, it found easy favor with the length and breadth of Barbadians. The company has earned a reputation for building its brand and providing top quality products. I believe it's directly into the passion and the pride of the people who produce the product. I mean, Banks is, Banks as a brand name is Barbadian uh, from 61, where we had a team of people, uh, length and breadth, operating, uh, taking that pride, selling the product, making the product. So you would have to attribute it to the team. It's, it's really a team effort that has made this, uh, this powerful flagship brand um, synonymous across the length and breadth. Um, the nice part is it has been recognized by visitors alike, uh, and it's quite easy to accept a, a, a label or a positioning when not only the persons who make it, the persons who consume it, and the persons who seek it and, sought, uh, and make it sought after could rubber stamp that this is a quality uh, product made in Barbados um, by Barbadians, and we continue to herald that. Companies often have to surmount several challenges if their products are to gain access in the regional and extra-regional markets. Well, for us, you know, we uh, our portfolio has evolved to start with. Uh, for, for between 61 and 91, we were a dedicated brewery offering a portfolio of brands starting with Bear, then the Tiger Malt came, then our unique product that we developed. It's unique for, uh, in the world. It's an energy drink uh, that is brewed from barley, malt and barley. Um, and as a result, we've continued to innovate. We brought several uh, stout products. We brought several um, high gravity Bear products. Uh, we continue to innovate in that area. We were the first with the light beer, we were the first with Banks Beer in PT, uh, we now have Banks Beer in cans, and recently we would have launched our brand of beer called uh, the Malicious Brew Series, 
bring into the market and the beer connoisseur a variety of beer. In the forefront of supporting the development of emerging industries in the region through product development, grants, trade shows and training is the Caribbean Export Development Agency. Executive Director Pamela Coke Hamilton sees its role as essential in the promotion of cross-border trade and development. I think it has changed over the years. I think it's important to, to look at the background and the development of Caribbean export over the last 18 years. When it was formed in 1996, it was as a response to several factors. One, the WTO agreement had just been signed on to um, at the completion of the Uruguay round in 1994, and it dramatically changed the rules of engagement in international trade. In a sense, it heralded the end of preferential arrangements as we knew them. And as you know, CARICOM and CARIFORUM operated under several preferential arrangements with the United States, Canada, and Europe. That began a trend which saw us, all of our preferences being eroded and changed over time. And so Caribbean export was a response, in a sense, to helping the private sector, in particular, to increase their capacity to export, to increase their ability to access markets. Because what trade agreements have done for us is that they've given us market access, but they have not necessarily given us market penetration. And what Caribbean export tries to do is to engage the companies directly and the BSOs to improve their capacity to access these markets through various tools. We have, uh, I would put them into three basic categories. The, the first set of tools that we have are the, the flagship, which is the access to finance. The direct assistance grant scheme, colloquially called the DAGs, is a grant scheme that gives directly to firms grants to do various interventions in the framework of their development. Partic and they have to be export-ready firms. They either have to be exporting already or they have to be export-ready. We give two sets of, of grants. One is the accelerated grant, which is just 5,000 euro. I shouldn't say thus, just, but it's 5,000 euro. And then we give the regular grants, which is up to 30,000 euro. It's a reimbursable grant scheme, so you have to find the money up front. But what we do is we try to work with uh, other development banks and other you know, um, financing mechanisms so that people who are approved can get access to money so that they can uh, claim the grant thereafter. The executive director outlines other aspects of her company's mission to facilitate trade development. The second one is on specialty calls. Now, the specialty calls have been, we decided that outside of the regular direct assistance grant scheme, which is a come one, come all situation, anybody can apply. We have also decided that there are some sectors which need specific targeted help. One of those is on uh, food safety. As you know, the, the FSMA was promulgated by the United States in uh, 2012. It has been pushed back a little bit, but by this year it will be fully on board, which changes the rules in terms of food safety for exports to the United States. The same is true for the HACCP and ISO certifications for export to Europe. What we have found is many of our companies have been challenged in meeting the requirements of food safety. So we recently launched a food safety proposal uh, call, which will give 10,000 euro to each firm um, that qualifies. And once they qualify for that, they will get that money, or we will hire an expert to go into their companies, put in place the, the, um, the, the, the tools that are needed for them to meet the, the certification requirement. As Mrs. Coke Hamilton notes, a recurring problem for some companies has been maintaining high standards and securing brand recognition. The second area that we also uh, found was uh, weak was the whole area of branding. Many of our many of our companies have issues with branding and packaging. We have a great product but as you know, it's looks that sell. <laughs> it is the way it is, right? So if something doesn't look nice, 
you know, I remember when I was years ago when I was posted in, in Geneva and we're at the WTO and the gentleman who was the head of the European delegation was saying, you know, the gross Michel bananas from the Caribbean taste better than anything you could ever imagine, but they just don't look good on the shelf because we didn't have, you know, the big Chiquita banana, which are perfect yellow and nicely curved, always weren't like that. Always came in a box from the Caribbean, and, you know, and they just threw them on the shelf. So the whole issue of image, you know, of branding and packaging is also critical in entering the market at a certain point. And one of the things we're looking at is to get our products entered at a higher price point, because that is how we will be competitive. We don't compete on mass because we don't have the numbers for that. But what we can compete on is getting into higher niche product areas. And that is related directly to branding and packaging. For any business, adequate financing is critical. And the Caribbean Export Development Agency also provides help in this area. Under the Direct Assistance Grant Scheme, 25 Barbados firms so far have benefited. Uh, totaling almost 682,000 euros. And this is out of a total of 5.8 million euros across the 15 Cary Forum states. So it's actually a significant um, number. And that doesn't include the specialty call and the branding and packaging. Um, so Barbados, of course, has been a full-fledged partner and, and participant in our processes and in, in how we work. The Caribbean has much to offer in terms of the uniqueness of its products. The challenge for many entrepreneurs is to turn good ideas into viable business ventures and to maintain quality standards. Well, one of the other platforms we were talking about was Caribbean Foods, the Caribbean Kitchen, it's called. And we took several companies to Anuga, you know, the, the food fair in Germany last year. And the success was phenomenal. Uh, as you know, three of them won the, the prim, were, were listed in the 54 for the premier awards. One was Saints Beer out of here. Um, and what we found was that the Caribbean was highly recognized out of 5,000 firms. For the Caribbean to come in the top 54 says a lot. And that three of them won one, the top awards, it says something. So they also received orders, right? I can't give you more detail on that, but they also actually received orders. So that's what we try to do as well. We take them to these premier trade shows where they're able to showcase their products and receive orders out of Europe. And they have, out of Germany, out of Switzerland, out of France. Smacks Tea received, um, orders out of intercontinental France, and they have been provided and are now being served in intercontinental Paris. Um, so what we've done is we've taken them to trade shows. We also took them to London in 2012. And what we found is that the agro-processing sector has been extremely vibrant. They have shown an interest in growing. They have shown an interest and willingness to rebrand, um, repackage. They, they really have been, in fairness, ahead of the curve in terms of their responsiveness and willingness to, to change the way they do things and their ability to be flexible and to meet market demand where it is. As Barbados looks to the future, greater emphasis must be placed on creating new initiatives that will propel development and boost revenue. Our mag trading was established as a farm in 1996, producing such crops as cassava, breadfruit, edo, and sweet potato. It opened its agro-processing facility in 2013. The reason that we got into this project was we noticed over the years that the production of root crops in Barbados had declined quite a bit. And I don't think it was because people didn't want to eat it. I think it was because people just did not have the time anymore to prepare it. And this is what led us to, to looking at seeing what we could do to make it available and make it available quicker, but without losing any of the nutritional value or taste that, that the Barbados root crops are known for. The process from the field to the table ensures that freshness and quality are sealed in. 
The potatoes washed in, an, in another, uh, another building to, to take off the mud is then brought here. Um, at the moment, the peeling is done by hand. We are looking at the pro uh, that process being done with a steam peeler when the volumes, when the volumes go up. It then is washed again, goes into the water where it's given a little wash, it goes into a machine then that cuts it into the fries. From there it goes into a blancher, a steam blancher, which the fries pass on a stainless steel mesh belt and the steam is injected through the belt and they spend about three minutes in there and the, the aim is not to overcook them, it's just to pre-cook them. So it basically is just locking the, the taste and nutrition into it. From there, it drops into a cold water dip, which has the effect of trying to slow or stop the cooking process as quickly as possible. Um, all, all of this is aimed at trying to maintain the flavor and, and goodness. So, it does, so that we don't have any leaching out of any of the vitamins, because we're using the, the orange fresh potato, which is a very, very healthy, healthy crop. From there, it passes over a grading table that takes out anything like an inch or, or less out of it and then goes immediately into a blast freezer, which will reduce the, the temperature from normally going around 40 degrees C, and within 30 minutes it's done below zero. This again is all to do with locking in the taste, locking in the freshness. This is our main aim. We're not, we're not aiming to add a lot of seasonings and salts and, and, and these kind of ingredients to our product. Our product is a fresh product. It is as you get it from the ground, that is the aim, but it, is processed and frozen to make it easier for you going home or in a restaurant to get it in a pot. Providing assistance to potential entrepreneurs so that their ventures will be viable is a key aim of the Barbados Investment and Development Corporation. Director of Entrepreneurship Michael Bino advises persons to first develop a business plan. People only see a business plan for the, need, for the necessity of trying to acquire money. It is not the way to do it. The business plan becomes a regular document in your operational place and you constantly allude to it. In addition to that, people need to pay attention to what is happening in the environment. Not necessarily the immediate environment, possibly Barbados. What is happening in the CARICOM region? What changes are coming on? How technology is managing to shift the balance in favor of other things? So you need to be constantly looking to m operate and recognize what needs to be done to your business to keep your business to the fore. You cannot sit down year after year and continue to do the same thing that you've been doing 20 years ago. People need to adjust and go with the times. It depends. Um, we have had, in recent times, most of the people that come to the BIDC, they have been coming, and their first question usually is, how much money I can qualify for? That's not where business starts. The first thing you should be telling us is, you have an idea, how you propose to, to transform this idea into reality? then you have to be accountable. Some people say, I need $150,000. Our first question is, what are you going to do with it? Justify the $150,000. Most people then cannot start. Because every, everyone will say, oh, um, I need machinery. Have you got the cost of machinery? No. But you already know that you need $150,000. The other thing that you need to be conscious of is this. You either do not undercapitalize or overcapitalize a business. When you overcapitalize it, it means that you are creating further debt on yourself that the business cannot carry. A business takes a little bit of time to mature. A new business starting in, in, the, in, the, in the sector, people got to know People have to become aware of the business, and it takes time to grow itself. A business manages to secure its product or its, its people and its clients by the quality of the product or services that are being offered. Therefore, the business will take time.
Achieving success in business and especially tackling the export market will require much more than having a good idea. Because it is no longer uh, packing a container and trading a commodity. It is about establishing uh, the, the demand, ensuring that your product can uh, satisfy that demand, and you have the wherewithal to be sustainable um, to market it um, and to meet the demands of the buyers on the sh shelves wherever you're seeking. Well, it, they, can, they can speak to somebody here at, at Foreign Trade in the EPA unit. They can speak to Caribbean Export, uh, because if they speak to us, we probably will address, you know, bring them together Caribbean Export eventually, particularly if they need, clearly need um, assistance. And I mean, Caribbean Export has developed a, a nine-point uh, program to, 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 I would say, almost train manufacturers on how to go about exporting your, your product into the European market. So it's something that we, 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 uh, we feel very good about because we think it helps to address some of the issues, particularly if you're not accustomed to, to exporting that kind of market, so you understand what needs to be done. I mean, there's a lot of information around too. The EU has uh, European uh, export help desk, which you know it has about I don't know. I tried to picture it about ten different different areas where it provides information that that you as an exporter need to be aware of if you are trying to export to Europe. And the the, the criteria are different for almost every product or every category of product anyway. So what applies to to food products, particularly protein food products like chicken uh, uh, and fish and dairy products, won't apply to jams and jellies. Uh, won't, and definitely won't apply to a garment or something. So you you need to you need to to look at the criteria that apply to your particular product. Barbadian entrepreneurs are definitely making inroads into the local, regional, and extra regional markets. And there is scope for businesses devoted to agro processing, food and beverage, and niche marketing. If you have an idea for a new business venture, you can make this dream a reality with the right product, capital, and marketing. But do your research first, because anyone can have a good idea and get assistance from the relevant agencies. We welcome your feedback on our programs. You may email your comments to bgisfeedback at barbados.gov.bb. You may also view our website at www.gisbarbados.gov.bb or subscribe to our YouTube channel, The BGIS.